ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون All praise is due to Allah whom we praise and turn to for help forgiveness and guidance to the right path and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our sins for whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever is misguided then only Allah the almighty can guide him and I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except Allah the almighty alone and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger may the peace and blessings and prayers be upon him until the day of judgment oh you have believed fear Allah as he truly should be feared and die only as Muslims die only in a state of Islam my dear brothers in a couple of khutbas that have passed we were shedding light on how a person can safeguard himself from trials and tribulations we mentioned to you in those khutbas that unfortunately the fitan the trials and tribulations uh, widespread in this day and age so what is the solution how do we safeguard and protect ourselves from these trials and tribulations how do we come under the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or how do we implement the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he said وَإِنَّ السَّعِيدَ لَمَنْ جُنِّبَ الْفِتَنِ Indeed, the successful, prosperous person is he who averts the trials and tribulations. And we mentioned to you that these trials and tribulations could be related to your religion, to your family, to your health, to your wealth, to your knowledge, Islamic knowledge, to the opposite sex, and the many trials and tribulations that a person may face in life. Today, we're going to shed light on another very important aspect of where a person can safeguard and protect himself from these trials and tribulations. And that is by averting and keeping away from these trials and tribulations not partaking in them and leaving them to the people of knowledge people in authority people of knowledge qualified and trusted people of knowledge who are qualified and trusted because they have insight they have experience they have sacred knowledge behind them from the Quran and Sunnah that will be or that will help them in guiding in understanding these trials and, and tribulations first and foremost and then in guiding the people on how to approach these trials and tribulations so reverting back to the people of authority people who are experienced in life people who have insight and knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah concerning these trials and tribulations unfortunately in this day and age everyone partakes in these trials and tribulations whether it's his line of work or not whether he has knowledge of it or not what I mean by that I'm sure you know and understand what I mean by that there's a lot of keyboard warriors huh? a lot of Facebook warriors Instagram and Twitter a lot of social media warriors mashallah that partake and talk about everything whether it's their field or line of work or not it's an unfortunate situation that the Muslim Ummah is, is in and subhanallah Yani, uh, the Prophet ﷺ gave us a golden advice. Wallahi, a golden advice 
on this issue. He said, he said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yakul khayran aw li yasmut. He who believes in Allah on the last day should say something good and or keep silent. You don't need to speak, brother. You don't need to spread false information. A lot of our brothers and sisters, they spread information, they don't know if it's correct or false, if it's right or wrong. Subhanallah, in another golden advice given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي A good sign of a pious Muslim, a good Muslim, is that he leaves that which is of no concern to him. It's not your field, it's not your area, it's not your speciality. Leave it to the specialists. Leave it to those who have knowledge of it, who specialize in it, who know about it. You don't need to poke your nose in it. And some of our pious predecessors also gave a golden advice. May Allah have mercy on the person who knows his capabilities, who knows where he stands, what he is able to do. But if it's not your field, it's not your area, leave it. Leave it for others. And take on board another very important advice from our Lord, the Almighty, in His holy book, who advised us to return issues, especially important issues, big issues, to the people of knowledge. Wherein he says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا When an issue arises relating to security, peace, they spread it. They spread it. They spread misinformation. Everyone gets involved in it. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Only if they had returned it back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Upon the Prophet, he, the return back to the Prophet is to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to the people of knowledge. People of authority amongst them. People of knowledge amongst them. Due to their insight, due to their knowledge, due to their experience. They would have known about it. They would have been able to clarify it for you. And if it wasn't for Allah's mercy and favor upon you, you would have followed the shaitan, except for a very few people of you. Yani meaning, my dear brothers, what Allah is telling us here, if you don't return it back to the people of knowledge, these issues, these important issues in your, in your, in your daily lives, these trials and tribulations that confront you, then what path are you going to follow? The path of the shaitan. The path of the shaitan. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he has some wise words also to say concerning this issue. He says, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتِ الْفِتْنَةِ عَرَفَهَا كُلُّ عَالِمٍ وَإِذَا أَدْبَرَتْ عَرَفَهَا كُلُّ جَاهِلٍ when a fitna arises in the community, uh, every scholar, trusted and qualified, will know it, or know about it, and know how to confront it. And when it ends, when it finishes, every jahil, ignorant person will know about it. Because he has no insight, no sacred knowledge, no experience. Contrary to the learned person. The trusted, learned person. Uh, this is one of the solutions of how we confront our, some of our trials and tribulations, my dear brothers and sisters, by returning it back to our learned scholars who are trusted, trusted and trustworthy and qualified, who can verify this information, who can shed insight on it, who can clarify it, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all types of fitan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. In the name of Allah and all praises due to Allah, may the peace and blessings and prayers be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers, our dear Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic hadith, Al-barakah ma'a akabirikum. Blessings, prosperity is with your elders. Is with who? With your elders. And here elders could mean two things, as our scholars have mentioned. The elders old in age due to their experience in life. Due to their experience in life. And or the elders here meaning the learned and trusted, qualified scholars, even if they are young. Even if they are young due to also having sacred knowledge and knowing uh, uh, yani having knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah wherein all barakah is and uh, yani one of the uh, proofs they use that it could be a young person who's qualified and trustworthy a learned young person is that Umar radiallahu anhu used to make or made Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who was a teenager amongst his shura amongst his shura due to his huge knowledge he had knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah he had knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah Hatta some of the elders when they used to say to Umar radiallahu an why do you bring this young teenager amongst us and then he tested them one day and he showed that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was worthy of being in this committee, in this shura, due to his knowledge. Due to his knowledge. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say, لا, لا يزال الناس بخير ما أخذوا العلم عن أكابرهم فإذا أخذوا العلم عن الأصاغر هلكوا People will remain in a good state. This ummah will remain in a good state as long as they take their knowledge from their elders. The elders who are trustworthy and qualified. If they take from their young, they will be destroyed. They will be destroyed due to their inexperience. Due to their lack of knowledge. But it's so important that we honor and respect the elders in our community, especially those who have knowledge amongst them. And that's why our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said in another authentic hadith, "Man lam kabirana wa yarham sagirana falaysa minna." He who does not respect and honor our elders and does not have mercy on our young, he is not of us. He's not on our ways. He's not on our guidance, on our path. And I want to leave you with a very important hadith to ponder over. A very important hadith to ponder over. Wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yantazi'u al-ilm antiza'am min al-nas. Inna ma yantazi'u al-ilm biqabd al-ulama'a. حتى إذا لم يبقى عالما اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهالا فسئلوا فأفتوا بغير علم فضلوا وأضلوا Ponder very importantly over this hadith my dear brothers to show you how important it is to go back to qualified and trustworthy scholars concerning trials and tribulations concerning big issues that may arise in our community Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith Allah does not snatch knowledge away from people He doesn't take away knowledge by snatching it away from people He takes away knowledge through the death of scholars 
by scholars dying until there is no scholar left what happens then people take ignorant people as their leaders ignorant people to go back to and they are asked for Islamic verdicts they give Islamic verdicts without knowledge they go astray and lead others astray they themselves go astray and lead others astray due to their lack of knowledge and their insight and their inexperience in life for this hadith shows you how important it is and that it is the only part of your salvation part of protecting and safeguarding yourselves during fitan that you return these trials and tribulations these big issues to trustworthy and qualified people in the community so that bi ifnillah they can clarify them they can guide you they can educate you they can give you the right advice in your life we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be amongst these people who uh, respect and honor our elders and our scholars who return the trials and tribulations and big issues to these trial uh, to these elders and to these scholars qualified and trustworthy scholars may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who increase their sacred knowledge we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our sacred knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah and to protect us from all from all trials and tribulations Allahumma azza al-islam wal muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wal mushrikeen wa akbit a'da al-deen ya akram al-akramin wa ya arham al-rahimin uh, continue on with the dua I want to shed light uh, and I forgot subhanallah on a very important issue that I'm sure you probably have come across and that is that one of our young Australian uh, brothers Yusuf al dhahab uh, passed away in a prison camp in Syria uh, Subhanallah, it's unfortunate There's about 60 odd women and children in these prison camps very vulnerable very weak uh, We've lobbied the government on so many occasions and unfortunately they Haven't taken heed or they haven't listened to us uh, these uh, children and women who are very vulnerable and very weak Yani subhanallah, they've been uh, in this state for years now. Uh, and it's the Australian government's yani responsibility towards them because they are Australian citizens. They deserve to be treated like humans. Yani, uh, what I want to encourage you all is to lobby your local politicians and lobby the government to bring these vulnerable women and children back to Australia because it's the government's responsibility. And they are Australian citizens. And yani, unfortunately, uh, one of them, a young teenager, uh, our brother Yusuf, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him amongst the martyrs, yani, uh, was killed recently. And Allahu A'lam, what suffering they are going through in these prison camps. Uh, yani, they're left for, basically, they're left for dead. If I encourage each and every one of you to lobby the politicians, your local politicians, the government, uh, through social media, to bring back these vulnerable children and women who haram at times, you could, you, know, you could see, you could tell, you could hear that it was uh, not their choice to be there. And a lot of them were actually born, a lot of these children were born in these camps. Terrible. You know, they're in a terrible situation. For the plight of our brothers and sisters in Syria yani, uh, is desperate. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate their, uh, their, their, the, the hardships that they are going through, the sufferings that they are going through. And we ask Him to alleviate the sufferings that every Muslim is going through around the world. Allahumma azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikeen wa akbit a'da al-deen. Allahumma ansur man nasar ha hadha al-deen wa akhzul man khadala hadha al-deen ya qawiyu ya azizu ya mateen. اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المقروبين من المسلمين واقض الدين عن المدينين من المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أحينا مسلمين وتوفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة